Hello, good evening, and welcome to the New Year's edition of the Bulldog Podcast Dead Air, brought to you from deep within the tempestuous bowels of the zombie proof lair that is the Bulldog Studios. I am Merrick, and with me, as always, are my esteemed colleagues Claire. Hello, and Happy New Year. And Ben. Hello. May all acquaintance be forgot. I think you'll find it's old acquaintance. Yeah, it's definitely forgot. old. Well, if we're going to be correcting mistakes, then uh, good afternoon and good morning to the people that are listening in the morning and, and, and slash the afternoon. Good night, I suppose you'll add in there as well. And happy weekend. Yeah, hello and okay, fair enough. I should say hello and good living. Yeah. Okay. Good, yeah, good existence. That 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 covers all the good, bases. Good random partially appointed time of the day to you all. Okay. Uh, in which case, I'll say hello and happy new year. Happy new year. There you go. Today we will be discussing uh, change, not uh, mistakes, as you might have gathered from that last conversation. Uh, especially the change that comes from the end and beginning of a year. Yeah, new year is a time for reflection, resolution, and of course celebration. Hey. Hey. Woo-hoo. And nothing says New Year quite in Spain quite as much as grapes. Yep, everything yeah. everything in Spain involves grapes. You got grapes uh, in liquid form. You got grapes in <laughs> solid form. <laughs> grapes form. At, at, uh, at a funeral. You can have grapes for I, your birthday. I would I would probably interject and say that um, I understand where you're coming from, but I think everything in Spain revolves around gambas. Really? Yeah. Well, if we're going if we're going cultural uh, specific kind of stereotypes, then jamón yeah. all the way. That's not a cultural stereotype. That's just what the Spanish believe their cultural mm. stereotype is. They are very very proud. Very proud people. Very proud of their okay, food. Okay, well, proud. in relation to New Year, more grapes than gambas. Thank you I think. for bringing us back on to. Someone's got to keep us on track. Yeah, thank you. Yes. So I've heard I've heard a version of the history of the the grapes. I'll tell you what I've heard, and, and you can tell me if it's wrong or if you've got a different version. Um, one of my students told me that the reason they eat twelve grapes at midnight, uh, well, the approach to midnight on New Year's it's Eve, the appro- it's, 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 the, it's the countdown. It's the on the countdown. Okay, it's the on the, on the bells yeah. on the on bells. bells. So one grape for the twelve bells. Um, of midnight is because there was an excess harvest one year of grapes and the government had a genius idea to promote um, the, the the selling of the excess harvest by creating a tradition that involved the grapes. I, is that I've true? Heard, I've heard this too. Uh, it's yeah, a story it sounds I've familiar. Uh, do you know what year this came in? 1972. Two. That's a no, ladies and gentlemen. He doesn't know which year. Do you 1973. Know I have no idea. It wasn't a competition question. It was uh. an earnest to request for information. That'll come in later. Competition um, question. I, 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 interestingly, I did the, uh, myself and my wife. We went uh, to my parents' house for New Year's after spending Christmas in Spain. I'm sorry and, to hear that. Uh, it's quite all right. We recovered. Um, and I wanted to make uh, my my Spanish wife feel at home. So we did uh, Spanish New Year with the grapes at uh, 12 o'clock Spanish time and then a British New Year at 12 o'clock British time. So I introduced my British family to the grapes tradition and uh, they all enjoyed it. They thought it was a laugh. It was great fun. Uh, I did explain exactly as you had just explained, Ben. I explained to my mum how this came about and my summary of it when she looked at me with an arched eyebrow was uh, I said, just like the ploughman's lunch. (laughs) <laughs> and she got very cross and said, no, the plowman's lunch was what plowman took for lunch. But no, it was an invention. It was an invention in the 1960s. In fact, actually late 1950s. Why? Uh, Why did they invent that? Excess of cheese? Cheese marketing Cheese harvest. Board. Cheese marketing yeah. board. God, these ge- genius marketing techniques for I'm excess harvests. Tell me about it. You don't harvest cheese. <laughs> you don't, where, where, how do you grow, how do it you grow, grow cheese? cheese? It doesn't grow on cheese. There's not like a, a cheese, a cheese tree. Oh, the, the post, post New Year's, obviously everyone is drunk for at least a week after New Year's. In Scotland, yeah. <laughs> you have, you well, have that's, why, that's why we have a public off. holiday on the 2nd. Can I ask you, Claire, about what? your method of eating the grapes 
Do you do you remove the skin? Do you remove the seeds? Uh, do you do you munch them all at once? Do you even make it to the end of the twelve grapes? Because I have a, a confession. lot of people don't. I've only ever done it once. And um, the grapes, the grapes about things. The grapes, I've only yeah. ever done it once, okay. and um, I didn't. I didn't eat all of them. <laughs> so you failed. I think I got to about number six. But the reason that, that I thought that the whole reason that you do this is that it's supposed to be good luck for the following year. So how many did you eat? I don't know. It was a couple of years ago. I Eight. think I only got to about seven. Seven. That's seven months it's of good luck. It's the thing is that that's at that point deal, where I was really? living. Did they it, how was your have, year? How was your well, year following? Well, they didn't have any seedless grapes, and I hate grapes with seeds in them, so I just couldn't get through them all. I did. I did it at New Year's because I celebrated um, in Spain. I had the the traditional Spanish New Year celebration at midnight, and then at one o'clock because I am English and my family are in England, and England is one hour behind. Uh, at one o'clock, we did the the New Year celebration that we we usually do in England. Which we're going to talk about in a moment. I have to say, I, I, as I've said previously, I was with my family for New Year. I was very disappointed with our New Year moment in England. I, um, my family relied heavily on the television, which had Brian Adams in concert. You did, you did the hooting act. Did you do the hooting? No, that, that's post. That's post midnight. Brian Adams played a concert in the lead up to midnight, and then I was looking for. I, I saw it actually. I did I had see that. Explained old lang syne to my wife and how we were all going to cross hands and have a kiss and sing this song and no we watched the fireworks first and the london fireworks went on for about a year (laughs) (laughs) yeah we uh, we watched them online and um i uh, well the question the question was five minutes in is is this still happening and how (laughs) and then the bigger question was how much did this cost yeah um, I, I think there were. Why is it set to fifteen seconds a piece of little bits of pop tunes that I don't have I never heard of? I didn't see the London ones. It was we, terrible. We got, we got the Edinburgh of, ones. So. Basically, I think they raised the taxes last year to afford a, a seventeen-minute. Wanted, wanted some impressive fireworks. It was about seventeen, eighteen minutes of fireworks. It was wow. incredible. And by the time we got to the end of it, I, the 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 desire to sing "Old Lang Syne" had kind of. I'm surprised that the the London Eye is still standing because they used it to launch uh, several stunning uh, firework displays from. The first one was really impressive, and then once you've seen the London Eye explode, once you've 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 seen it enough, you know. Precisely. Yeah. Mid 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 firework display, one of my younger brothers and sisters said, um, oh, "I wonder how much it would cost to uh, to be on the London Eye." On that <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Maybe there was a tourist <laughs> trapped in one of the, yeah, the eggs. Did state it was highly unlikely that there was any individuals within those glass cabinets. <laughs> they were they weren't having a lot of fun. Um, this year, I only made it through six grapes myself personally. Six um, months of good luck. I burst into fits Tears? of laughter. Oh. Fit, fits of laughter. Watching my family wrestling with grapes was quite entertaining. Who got but, who got the most, Merrick? Uh, one of one of my legion of siblings i can't remember uh but i only got to six because my my infant daughter kept making these weird howling sounds every time i put a grape in my mouth she was watching me with eyes wide and going <gasps> every time i put a grape in i got to six and i just i burst into laughter and dribbled grape juice all over the floor uh, well mm. i i managed all 12 i stuffed them into my gob and um the the people that were with me well I thought they'd be impressed Do you see that you but see, the people the people were people him. the people there were a lot of them he's, <laughs> there was, he's converted I'm trying he's to pretend that, to that I have uh, <laughs> some form of social life really what I mean was the, the my beams. reflection in the mirror <laughs> my dog <laughs> yeah. and your girlfriend <laughs> yeah basically yeah sad times anyway the people that were with me I thought they'd be really impressed but uh, they just looked on with a, a kind of mixture of disgust and well, no, it was just disgust. Only disgust. <laughs> just disgust. Did your, I did roared. Your mania, I, did your I roared. Say to you. Say to you. It's not a competition, Ben. Uh, no, she was just amazed. Just <laughs> amazed at how much stuff I could put in my mouth, and still talk. I was still talking while I was doing it because twelve doubt, grapes aren't going to silence me. Well. <laughs> you can't shut me up with grapes. <laughs> they make me louder, if anything. Okay. Anyway, okay. Um, okay. moving of grapes. Moving swiftly the grapes onwards. Of, the grapes of wrath. Um, around New Year's, uh, they have some very different things in Spain compared to England. And I didn't realise this until I moved here, how strange we are 
in Britain. I, I think there are there are different types of celebration across the world, um, but what we do in England is 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 very unusual. I've like, for you me sing a Scottish song. I've well, I, I I expect that you've done this every year of your life when you've been at home with your family. Uh huh. Yeah. Um. And I I've always done it. I've always done it with my family, and I've never considered it to be unusual because that's what we do. And I came here and I uh, I started to uh, insult the Spanish because I was grapes. What are you doing with these grapes? This is weird. You're weird. And then they asked me, what do you do? Uh, New Year's, and I explained Old Lang Syne, and that was the point I realised that yeah we're which we're I unusual. have been I have been reliably informed by several um, sources that in Spain the tune for Old Lang Syne is used on a, uh, a headlice advert. I have heard that. Yeah. yeah, I didn't. I wasn't um, particularly impressed by that. Fact. So Claire, can you explain? Old Lang Syne. Translate the Actually, words. You wanna... <laughs> do you do do you do the same thing in Scotland? There is actually. What you mean singing Old Lang Syne on the stroke of midnight after the and match. and yeah. the strange thing with the arms. Yeah, well, we do see we all we also do like that for other Scottish songs. So I think it's maybe just a Scottish thing because it happens with the Proclaimers in Loch Lomond, and it happens with an awful lot of Scottish songs at parties. Thing, there is a thing. The English tradition is to cross arms and start with the arm shaking, hokey cokey sort of nonsense. At the you start hold the song, hands with the, the person on either side of you, your, but um, with your arms crossed. Much like, much like the way that we pull crackers. You do realize that they can't yeah. see us at the moment. They can't. So yeah. <laughs> we're just we're all doing it. Listeners, we're all doing it um (laughs) but uh apparently apparently in scotland tradition goes that you only uh join hands uh towards the end of the song um to be honest i'm not sure because normally when we get to that point everyone's so drunk anyway that no one really pays attention that is slightly unfair the tourists are drunk at that point the scots don't get drunk till about three to four o'clock in the morning you think oh yeah that's when the party starts well did you know that um do you know the reason why New Year's such a big celebration in Scotland? You, you mentioned this off air before we began, yeah. so for the purposes of continuity, I'll pretend that I don't. Please, <laughs> please tell me. Well, in Scotland, Christmas wasn't a public holiday until Shocking. the Shocking day, 1950s. What? This is this is terrible. This is why clearly is... some sort of English conspiracy to make the Scottish work harder. I think they don't. They don't really well, need Christmas an excuse. Christmas was banned uh, in Scotland very early on, I think since 1600 and something. Christmas was banned, banned. because it's too English. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's probably those Calvinist Presbyterians. It was a historically a conflict between the Protestant and yeah, the exactly, Catholic. Yeah. Um, kings. And you didn't have Coca Cola in in Scotland at that time. You only yeah. drink Iron Brew. Well, Coca Cola <laughs> wasn't um, wasn't created until 1890 no 1885 have you been using the internet again <laughs> no do you know why i know this Claire it's has very prepared sad. herself listeners wow do you know why i know this it's Go very on. sad Go on. um coca-cola went on sale on my birthday and i have a little keyring of all the facts of things that happened on my birthday how old and are you a <laughs> hundred a hundred years before i was born but okay. yeah you must use nivea <laughs> There you go. Claire has surreptitiously slipped in, slipped in her birthday into the podcast there. You have oh. to go and look it up to yeah. find out what day it actually is. Um, so anyway, so Scotland wasn't ce- Scotland didn't celebrate Christmas until the early 1950s. I well, but the, the, well, Scotland's, we didn't have a public holiday. In Scotland celebrated Christmas, but yes, but we didn't have a public in holiday a very in silence well, in, in a very Scottish underground. Way, going, Damn you, English overlords! Well, actually, yeah. um. In like around war, the war time, the second, first, second world war, children got their presents on New Year's Day or on New Year's okay. Eve. So okay. New Year was the big celebration yeah. for us. Yeah. Well. Meanwhile, in Spain, uh, we celebrate Christmas in Britain and New Year's, but they have they have the three kings, which we spoke about briefly in the last podcast. Um, it's a strange time. Uh, what happens on Three Kings? Well, in, in Britain, traditionally, it's what we call Twelfth Night, and it's the night where we take down decorations, and it's the end of Christmas. Yeah. So that's the, that's the day that the Christmas trees all sit uh, forlornly on the driveway or out waiting for the rubbishman to pick them up. Everybody's outside riding their new bikes. Everybody. I said, oh, I'm, actually, that's on Christmas Day as well. I was going to say, because lots of kids are back at school on the 6th in the UK. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say about that time, people have already grown tired of their their toys, their and they're just like and their relatives. <laughs> yeah, 
This is a pile of discarded toys and relatives. Uh, I uh, have I have developed a bit of a problem with the cavalgata, the uh, <laughs> the free kings procession. Last year, I literally felt like trying to get a tram out of ta- the city centre. Last year, before the cavalgata started, was like trying to get a Huey helicopter out of Saigon. Um, it was madness. People turned into animals and i promise i got back home i was so cross and i said to my wife i am never ever going into town to do that ever again and she said what about when we have children I said, you can take them i am not going to any i'm not going to the city center any a- anymore on that day at that time and this year and what happened this year Mary? this year i had to get in my car to go to ben's house to collect my dog and once again got caught in a snarl up of angry spanish people uh-huh. it was it was chaos yeah was i went chaos. out i went out foolishly to the shop to get supplies so i could stay inside and not experience it <laughs> and just the short walk from my my home to the shop let's i'm i'm going to be controversial now i'm going to say it because it's true spanish people can't walk this this is very true this is very true. Unfortunately, until recently, I've started driving in Spain. Until recently, I used to say Spanish people should approach uh, walking like driving. They should have brake lights and indicators. Now I've been driving for a few months. They can't drive either. Um, so, so no lights are going to help them. Uh, this random braking without warning uh, in, in the street. Random, uh, stopping, random stopping. Random yeah. changing of direction. Uh, random Slow walking. Conversations Did, that block the entire pavement. They, single file people. It's easy. Yep. You walk. You walk in a Basic line. Basic principles, Ben. Basic principles. If there are three people in one group coming one direction in the pavement, and there is one person in another group of one coming in the other direction, the people in the larger group make way for the other person to get. I've faster. seen eight no. generations of a family walking in a line, <laughs> blocking out the sun. Um, there's no way you can get around them. Were they incredibly and tall or something if they were blocking out the there's sun? There's just lots of them. Just lots so of slow them. that the sun had dipped in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. Spanish people don't know how to walk or drive. Uh, so, yeah, that's another... Uh, cancel another set anyway, of well, listeners. Finishing, <laughs> finishing with the race hate yeah. moving on moving on to more positive ground actually it's not positive something that i want to <laughs> what, what something that i want to talk about is very negative new year's i think is the most disappointing day of the year it's the last day of the year and the most disappointing day of the year. everybody has incredibly is, high expectations okay but it's a way of getting right. I, I agree with you if you have if you get excited about new year invariably it will disappoint you if you have low expectations and you just approach it like a I, I, I was going to say a normal a normal evening out, but I'm now in my mid thirties and no evening out is normal anymore. It's always a unique experience. I, I'm leaving the house. Woo! This is incredibly uh, depressing advice. <laughs> You're saying don't ha- no, ho- don't hope for positive things. <laughs> let me finish. Uh, you, you aim the bar low. You are normally impressed, but uh, there's another way of looking at it. It's quite a nice way. Think about a year as a person. So January the first is the, is is it's a baby going through to old age as it gets to the end of December it's an old man frail with grey hair got to take him out into the yard and, and shoot and him quietly close his eyes and be gone into history consigned to the dustbin of previous experience well there's an old guy going out with a bang because we always have fireworks so there you go Boom. there you go the king is dead long live the king um, I feel I don't know about you two but I feel New Year for me has become more of a a reflective evening and actually when we spoke off air uh, before the Christmas holidays and we said that uh, New Year is normally much more enjoyable if it's a peaceful affair going out getting listen to how old we sound uh, going out getting hideously drunk to be honest it's... getting wet and cold losing your mobile paying over the odds for a tax you have to wait four hours for everything's more stuff. expensive yeah I saw some very interesting articles uh, about the Uber service, the car yes. service. Um, they had uh, increased their prices by... I, the maths is... I can't... They I, do, you they need do Stephen it, Hawkins to help you out with the mathematics. When there's a localised strike in a city, when there's a, a, an underground strike or a, a bus strike or there's weather problems, Uber always hike up their fares. 
So yeah, there's no surprise. It's there. insane. There was a guy that had a 30 minute journey that cost him over a thousand dollars in New York. Seriously, that was one of the. Well, his first he's taken them to court. New York, isn't it? Well, that's that's correct. And get a taxi. Yes. Everywhere you should turns, live in Zaragoza. Everywhere like he turns, he's got Carrie Bradshaw on the side of buses wearing <laughs> stupid tutus. What's he expect? Of course, he's going to pay a thousand dollars for a taxi. <laughs> Everyone's trying to escape the place. Um, Are you in New York Kurt about Russell. about ten years ago, Merrick? <laughs> <laughs> What can I, I say? I've been busy. <laughs> I've, I've lost track of time. Um, um, but you see, what about the rest of the world, Ben? Do we know Claire, Ben? I mean, we talk about Scotland, or we haven't really let Claire speak about Scotland. Yeah, so, Claire, can I just nothing. say one one more thing? I don't know. Maybe you do this in Scotland because, uh, like, you you know you how you represent Scotland and everything, and you're like our go-to person. Um, in in my home, we open all of the doors to let in the, the, the new year and to let out the old year. That might just be because my family are a bit strange, but... Um, don't have concerns about heating bills. Yeah. No, that... Throw another child on the fire. That's how we, <laughs> that's how we keep warm. You're absolutely right. That, that was an old tradition. Most people don't do it now because it's cold, but when my mum was little, or my parents were little, rather, they, um, they used to do that. You had to... Um, my grandma was obsessed. You had to clean the entire house. On um, on Hogmanay, as we call it in Scotland, the thirty first New Year's Eve, you have to clean the house because the house had to be totally spotless to go into the New Year. So everything was perfect and clean. Is, you is had... that tradition or is that a psychological no, that's, problem? No, that's that's a tradition. Oh. She's not OCD. She just that's a tradition. Well, you also is... have to pay off all your debts. Oh, okay, well, that's interesting. Because you're supposed to enter the New Year with a clean slate. Yeah, yeah. Which um, I'm sure a lot of people don't manage, no, but no. especially after Christmas. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, there is there is a tradition of um, first footer. Yes, um, first footing. F- first footing, yeah. Ah, the first person, footing. The first guest to enter Scottish your accent. house. If uh, the way I used to understand it, if they brought a lump of coal, they drank free for the evening. That might have been a slight exaggeration of the parties I went to when I lived in Scotland. But my mum was telling me about uh, when she was younger. It sounds quite similar. You see, Ben was sceptical of your grandmother, but actually, uh, it, it, my 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 nanny used to do the same thing insist that everybody's shoes were spotless really and then put the shoes outside and put a piece of coal in the shoes and my mum as a child used to get very confused and say why are we cleaning our shoes then putting coal in them so there is a general thing of bringing coal because a it was expensive b it, it warmed the house was the idea but in gen in general there is a, a sense of allowing as i was talking about the spirit of the old year to depart and the freshness of the new year now, what comes of that freshness is, as you were saying, resolutions. Yeah, that is right, resolutions. Now, do we need to explain what New Year's resolutions are to our dear listeners? Yes, I think that um, Claire has prepared <laughs> uh, some information <laughs> that she's going to recite for well, us now. someone has to be prepared, Ben. <laughs> yeah, well, ben, obviously it's your you. work. As, as Merrick said, the big thing about res- um, the big thing about New Year is resolutions. So, a resolution. What we mean by resolution is a, a goal that we all set for ourselves to be achieved during the new year. So this can this can take many forms. It can be losing weight, which almost everybody sets themselves this goal after mm-hmm. Christmas belt's a little bit tight and you went to lose a bit of weight you have indulged for a couple of weeks it's yeah. usually it's usually giving up something that's lent or <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah <but laughs> generally people for their resolution they give up so they give up smoking or they give up eating chocolate or, or they, they give take up, up something enjoying life um it's it, normally I, I agree with claire it tends to be objectives it can be something like uh uh, an, an annual, an annual traditional new, a New Year's resolution for me is to write a book. Every year for the last ten years, <laughs> I said to myself, "I am going to write a book. This is it. This year, it's going to be done." And I get to December and go, "Right, New Year's resolution. I'm going to write a book." It's setting yourself a, a challenge or an objective, something you want to achieve, isn't it? And what's happening? I noticed all of my family this year. Oh, they were all talking about dry month or dry mouth. Dry it's January. the dry, triathlon, I think triathlon, it's called. Triathlon, that's the one, thank you. When no one's going to drink alcohol through January. And well, I just, think, I just think that's the poor old beer marketing board is getting very cross. Which brings us nicely to the uh, question so this that Claire has question. prepared for us. 
Well, the question is, and Merrick um, very nicely alluded to it, is when do you think most people give up their New Year's resolution? What I mean by this is when do they stop doing the thing that they've resolved to do for the new year? Does that include gym attendance? That includes everything. Okay. Yeah, any, any resolution that you've set. So I have three possible answers. A, New Year's Day, sometime in the morning. B, mid-January. Or C, sometime in February. Well, I'm going to go for C because I feel that... Um, it's either somewhere between mid-January and the end of January that people give up giving up. Um, I agree with you completely. Um, I think that um, most people can manage a month. Um, I think, yeah, a lot of people will give up, but I think most um, most people will, will manage a month at least. Mm -hmm. So somewhere in February, sometime in February. I love the fact you're both clearly glass half full type of gentleman, and you've gone for the most optimistic answer. I'm very positive. Oh, I'm very positive as well. It's very, listen, it's very nice. I like my, it. Uh, um, positive sounding voice. I, I, I would say from personal experience as well. <laughs> 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 you know, there is this strange thing, isn't it? You, you wake up. Actually, a few years ago, and I, I, I used to live in Scotland, so I've, I've, I've experienced several New Year's celebrations in Scotland. Uh, and in my mid to late twenties, I got to the point where I was waking up, not on the first, on the second, because you wake up on the first and you've got to keep on drinking, otherwise the hangover makes you catatonic. Uh, and that's why the, there's two holidays in Scotland. And you wake up on mm. the second, and it's about recovery, and you feel miserable. You feel awful. You feel. That's just a general mental state in Scotland, isn't it? <laughs> so the, we the weather. <laughs> And the he's, economy. He's so, to hit today. So, uh, <laughs> and, and living on top of England like that, and you know everything's better down there. <laughs> it's just depressing. I can't and, imagine and, it. And I made a, uh, a resolution, not necessarily a New Year's resolution, but a resolution in general to not be hung over when the New Year came in anymore. And, and so I've tried very hard not to drink too much on New Year's Eve. And how's that so working out for you? Very well, actually. I, you know... I now wake up at the start of a year and go, oh, let's go for a walk. This is delightful. But is that not related to the fact that you now have a dog and a child? Yeah, this this happened before I had a dog and a child, oh, okay. which obviously have helped the uh, necessity of waking up early and all of that stuff, yes. But um, when you look at some of the more traditional resolutions that everyone makes, uh, as you said, Claire, losing weight, going to the gym... Um, I see you. Very laudable. You, you see so many people sweating their way around uh, the outskirts of the city, down by the river, running in their brand new trainers they got for Christmas, and the you see those people. Lycra vests. Yeah, you squeezed into them. You see those people for about two weeks, and then I don't. Maybe they die. Maybe they fall <laughs> in the river. Maybe they have a heart attack. But after two weeks, you don't see the same faces panting and jogging around the this this is spoken city. from clearly the position of knowledge ben clearly is a well he wishes to i'm an athlete he wishes to convey <laughs> the, the concept to the listeners that he's a regular runner uh, yeah. i don't think he's regular i think i think ben you only have... only when it's last orders at the bar highly <laughs> highly irregular runner yeah. how dare you <laughs> you have spikes of running, if the tram's you? just leaving <laughs> or I don't know if yeah, last orders. I my sister my sister recommended this is dangerous dangerous ground. I, I'm gonna recommend another podcast. Um, my sister listens to I think it's called Sofa to Five K. Um, so the idea of a, a nine this nine week program. Hmm. A nine week program not nine step, nine to, week. To get someone from a a couch potato lifestyle to running five K. Five kilometres there, ladies and gentlemen. How many miles I, is that? Uh, that is like one. Three, <laughs> like a mile. I think. No, is it not? Two and a half? It's roughly, no, it's roughly two kilometres to one mile, isn't it? So five Yeah, it's about like, that. It's more or less. It's, yeah. it's around ten miles. No, it's, no, it's, no, it's, it's the other way around. It's about way. three, three miles, I think. Maths, not my strong head point. on back. Three miles. Yeah. Two point something, I Which think. Which isn't a great deal, really. He says, knowing that he would probably cough up a lung if he tried to run a thousand yards. 
Um, I've never seen you run. Yards. I've never well. seen you. <laughs> you wouldn't run if you were on fire. I can't, I can't outrun my thousand yard stare, let alone anybody else's. So, uh, I am foolishly going to say this on air. I am going to attempt this program. Um, might not start it straight away, but I am going to attempt getting myself. You mean it. you've downloaded it? That's... <laughs> I haven't even done that. Oh, yet. God. <laughs> Step oh, one. Good luck. Download. <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Because my, when my sister said, it's like a podcast you listen to while you're doing the running program. So, you know, you're out there jogging away going, oh, God, this is tough. And then the guy goes, run faster, run slower. And so I'm going to give it a go, see how it works. I've got a little bit of uh, weight to lose. A bit of paunch. Yes, it has. It's come on a plenty. Yeah. Uh, too much curry and good eating in both Spanish and I was English. very jolly, very jolly over Christmas. I was force-fed. Well, nobody forced me. Um, I was fed by my mum. Twisted your arm a little I, bit. I, yeah. I, listeners, I can, I can confirm that... Ben Pate is marvellous. Yeah, it's very good. What? He was force-fed, and force since fed. his liver has been sliced <laughs> up and served to us on dry crackers. Anyway, <laughs> moving swiftly <laughs> onwards. Yeah. Um, some other cannibalism. resolutions. So you're talking about health. Health is definitely a big, um, a big no, resolution no. for most people. Um, I have some facts. Here's it one. Ben. It's 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 related to what uh, Claire was saying earlier about people getting rid of their debts um the babylonians that is the ancient babylonians uh promised to return people borrowed five promised to return borrowed objects uh for new years so it's kind of the same idea the the resetting uh-huh. of things the um the change comes in starting afresh starting is, anew is it i think it's the jewish calendar has the seven year cycle of the shemitah yeah, that's and every right. Every seven years, the all debts are cancelled or cleared. Yeah. Every seven, and then there's a a pause year before you start the cycle again. Uh-huh. It's a similar thing, isn't it? So you can go out, get some loans, get some Jewish loans, get some Jewish, loans. and then um, your jobs are good. And also, uh, the Romans uh, made a vow to is it Janus, Janus the god Samantha Janus, from, uh, Janus <laughs> Samantha Janus. The god uh, from whom the month of January gets its name. Um, that vow could be anything. They make a, a promise to, what to the god. What was Samantha the god of, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> you can cut this bit. Oh, I've lost him. <laughs> got stuck in my throat. <laughs> I got Janus in my throat. <laughs> Better Janus stuck in my throat. <clears> throat> Janus, or Janus, uh, was the god of January. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, my, you res- don't know, do my you? research Your didn't research go that far. Has hit a brick wall. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, Answer the postcard. Um, wh- resolutions I tend to, as I said, is, is objectives in terms of achieving something, learning a new skill. Uh, people set themselves objectives to get a new job, uh, to. to, to find a husband or a wife hmm that kind but of these thing. are these are very big objectives they're very big goals and one of the things Which i want to talk back to claire's about. question when do they give up <laughs> exactly <laughs> and oh, also, don't worry to answers find a wife. will be at the end of the podcast <laughs> also um should should you really wait for a specific day to make such big changes in your life should you not always be focusing on making these changes i i agree i agree you should be you should be every day should be a new year every day should be a, a challenge to improve yourself or to make life better for someone else or it's it, it sells lines. a lot of papers and a lot of online articles you can find a lot of information about how to succeed with your resolutions or uh, how to make resolutions that won't fail so how do you how do you stick to your resolution i think personally you have to choose something small or sustainable if you want to make a change but i prefer to make a resolution of doing something new or something that i've always wanted to do for example like almost every year try and take up a new hobby or try something new so about three years ago i bought a guitar in december mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I started trying not to play guitar. It. No, yeah, not played it once. That guitar is very dusty, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. It's not very dusty. I do play it. I'm not very good, but I do play it. 
Um, finger fudge still, on a, still in the box. <laughs> um, two years ago, I took up dance class. She still dances. I still I can dance. Confirm, I can confirm. Um, I've seen her dance. Yeah. At least I think that's what. Last it was. year, I <laughs> told <laughs> myself I'd take up it. French again. That that didn't stick. That one. That didn't stick. That one didn't stick. So what about this year? This year, well, this month, I am um, starting a circus class. Oh yes. An aerial, an aerial class. So I'll, Air- I'll let you know well, how that we'll goes. Well, I, I want to hear updates on that. Definitely, yeah. you'll be um, writing about that. I assume. I hope so. Yes. Mm. I'd be of, very. Some some entries sort of, on the on some the sort of acrobat bulldog website. Diary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Our clown on the inside, inside the big tent. We've cl- What's your clown name? Do you, have you got a clown name? Um, I prefer acrobat. To so she did. She did say it was aerial. Yeah, but I just aerial imagine. I just see you as a clown. Well, now. there is a clown. There, well, there was hey, a clown big workshop. I missed it. But maybe you'd like to do that, Ben. I could. Yeah, I've always fancied natural. myself. He, he as you've been an excellent clown. clown. To be yeah. a clown. Listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> the sound is perfect. That is a perfect yeah. sound. Uh, you just need to get your big red nose now. So, so Claire's resolution this year, or a big one, is to become an acrobat. Uh, <laughs> yep. That's 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 not insurmountable at all. Good luck. Well, to, to do you. the class, at least. Yeah, I'll do the class. Well, what the knows? results are. Who knows? Mm. Uh, it would look really good on radio. Um, ben, what is your big resolution this year? I uh, I resolve to complete all of my resolutions from the previous years. <laughs> Uh, my resolution last I year. I thought you were going to refer to a computer game. <laughs> I resolved to complete all the levels of Double Dragon. Yeah, GTA Five. <laughs> I'm going to crack it. I don't. I don't even have a PS4. Um, so. Do you have a PS3? Or a PS3? <laughs> I haven't got any PS. Is PS is? What's the plural of PS? PlayStation. I don't know. PlayStation's is. Um, there are other other consoles available on the free market. Obviously. Are we selling computers now? <laughs> I hope we get commission for this. Now, my resolution last year was to write a novel. And I I took part last year in NaNoWriMo, which is during the month of November to write a novel. You write every day. You have to write, I think it's 1,675 words. How did that go? Um, It went really well for the first week. I I got about 20,000 words done. Your your goal, the target is to write a novel of 50,000 words unedited so you have something to work with That's afterwards. I got about 20,000 words done and then life kind of got in the way. But um my resolution this year is to continue, continue. with that and to get, get it finished Go and it, edit it. Yeah. So Yeah, um, well my available soon my, my in all good bookstores. <laughs> <laughs> my resolution for this year is uh, aside from uh, the attempt to get myself a bit fitter and lose a bit of weight, uh, is uh, which is a rather boring one, I'm afraid. Get a like, new hat. Uh, no, I, I quite like this hat. Um, uh, grow the beard back. I am these, definitely these growing are, the beard these back. These are objectives that are achievable, yeah, remember? Yeah, I'm growing the beard back. Uh, the, the beard was shaved off purely as a small Christmas present to my wife. And I immediately, as ever, immediately regretted it, and it's going, it's going back forthwith. Yeah, I can um, see your face. I know it's not good, is it? Uh, and like Ben, I, I'm, I'm going to try and do some writing again this year. It's been a while. I've been rusty. Um, I want to get back into that and uh, finish, finish my little music project on the side as well. Get that done. Look at us all just pitching our, <laughs> our side projects. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You can uh, yes, come and see Cl- yes, Claire the Magnificent. Yes, Claire, <laughs> Claire <laughs> will be performing. The, the, the Scottish Swan flying <laughs> gracefully through the air. The flying Scots, Scots, do that Scots woman. Ah, Scots woman. that's brilliant. <laughs> that has to be your acrobatic name. The flying Scots woman. Sorted. Yes. Uh, and then meanwhile, yes, yes, look out for Ben and all good bookshops. Yeah. You know, holding his little I'm always, st- I'm <laughs> always yeah, stood in Wait. the corner of every good bookshop. Waiting for people so he can sign it. Yeah, yeah. I won't, I won't wait for them to ask me to sign things. I'll just sign things, even if it's not your book. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm, I, that's my my idea. My part of my resolution is to to get my name out there by just putting my name in other people's books <laughs> <laughs> and a link to my unfinished novel. This is all genius marketing strategy uh, we should be discussing off air. Um, and so, as we draw to a close. It, just remains for us simply to uh, to give the answer to Claire's question and meanwhile 
Before we do that, to announce the winner of our competition from the previous podcast, uh, from the entries that Claire is uh, rolling a piece of paper, um, <laughs> rather than drum roll, um, uh, from the, uh, the mountain of entries we received, we have read through them all, and uh, the winner it is, it, it did, it took all of our holidays, the winner is uh, Jorge Sanchez, congratulations Jorge, you have won a custom build your own cracker kit to celebrate with your family next year at Christmas, Woo! congratulations, well done. Um, and a cruise. Thank you, yeah, and a cruise on the Caribbean. Of course. Uh, if you want a signed photo of Ben, um, ask Ben. I, I've i got quite a few of them. He's got some now. left over there, from the job lot. Yeah. There's a lot I can, I'm been, I've tried handing them out in the street, but people give them back. Yeah, I don't know. They, they, yeah, exactly. Uh, keep an eye out on the worksheet that uh, will come attached to this podcast for uh, the next competition. Uh, and thank you very much for participating. Claire. It is time to reveal the answer to your teaser question from earlier on in the podcast. Please, The moment you've all been waiting for. Absolutely. So, just remind me, both of you said... We said C. C. Sometime in February. Sometime in February. Well, the answer is in fact B. Mid-January. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, specifically... There has been statistical research into this. Statistically, the 17th of January is the day that the average person gives up. That's uh, slightly more than two weeks. Yeah. If they've actually given this a name, Ben. It's called Ditch New Year's Resolutions Day. So isn't isn't that isn't there also it's like the twenty third of January or something or the Monday around that point is meant to be the most depressing day of the year. Yeah, it's called Blue Monday, I Blue think. Blue Monday. Is yeah. That, is that close to ditch New Year's resolution day? It's about what did you say the twenty something? Twenty third rings about, but obviously it's yeah. not always a Monday. It changes every well, year. Well, yeah, that would probably be the Monday after you give up all your resolutions. Yeah. The Monday Lots of reasons on the booze. to be depressed. Yeah. Oh, oh no, you're sitting on the sofa stuffing your face with chocolate. I hate myself. What have I become? You know, that's bl- well, that's a blue I, day. I, I, Just I another Monday. My wife, I mentioned my wife. As, as I said, I felt a bit melancholy as I took down the Christmas decorations yesterday. And I said, oh, Christmas is finished. And she looked at me with a big smile and said, just a countdown to St. Valentine's now, isn't it? Oh, yeah, St. Valentine's. Another excuse for consumerism to continue its steamrolling over our culture. You find no arguments here. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, in February, we'll be talking about St. Valentine's Day. <laughs> we might have to f- bring someone in who's a fan. Yeah. Surely, surely every day is Valentine's Day in your household. Uh, absolutely, Ben. Uh, as I always tell my wife, I don't need a particular day in the calendar to tell her I love her. Now make me a sandwich. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's a discussion for another day. So, there you are. Uh, that is episode two of season one. Listen to that ambition in that statement. <laughs> <laughs> that's a New Year's resolution, if you've ever heard one, of uh, Dead Air, the Bulldog podcast. Thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. We look forward to speaking to you uh, next month, when you'll all obviously be running and quitting smoking and not drinking and writing books just like this. Don't give up. Don't be strong. Yeah. Certainly not before we end the January, please, just to prove me and Ben right. Thank you very much and goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.